but yeah, Gareth, thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, I appreciate it's probably very late over in Australia. Um, what what time is it then? Uh, it's around about uh, close close to ten to ten, I think it is. So yeah, it's quite uh, quite late, but uh, no problem at all. Anything for uh, anything for the for the club or anything like that, mate. Appreciate that. Um, first of all, obviously, it's, you know, a difficult time at the moment with the coronavirus. How are you and how are you how are your family at the moment? Yeah, we're all going well. Uh, obviously, uh, everything's, everything's stopped over in Australia, um, but obviously we're keeping well um, and uh, look forward to uh, things getting back to normal, but uh, I think there's a little bit of time left for that as well. Yeah, what, what is it like in Australia? You mentioned it's all stopped. Is it is it as strict as it is over here in terms of lockdown? I mean, how, how often are you allowed out? Where can you go? Um, we they're, they're redu reducing the strict restrictions here now, so we're uh, we're getting less and less. Obviously, we haven't had as many many deaths. Uh, obviously, we've had a few, but um, not not as as many. But um, we're getting getting close to kind of not getting back to normal, but heading back into the way of uh, being able to get out and about. Um, they've eased it so we can go go have a picnic and things like that. Um, so that's that's where they're at at the moment. But uh, yeah, but it's it's um, it's getting uh, heading in a good direction for Australia. No, good, good. And obviously, you run a soccer school at the moment. Um, that must have been impacted by this. What's, what's the latest with that? I mean, when, when, when are you hoping you can get that back up and running properly? Um, the date, the, the kind of uh, date they're talking about is the 25th of May. Uh, is hopefully when we can get back. But um, I'm hoping it's a little bit. They, keep, they, the restrictions keep changing day by day here uh, as things uh, are getting better and better. I mean, where I live in in uh, regional regional Queensland, which is up north. Um, we haven't had any cases for 28 days, so uh, which is uh, which is a, a good thing for us, and uh, hopefully we can get back to normal. No, definitely, definitely. So, um, main reason for the call, obviously, um, it's the 7th of May. It's a day that a lot of Don's fans will remember fondly uh, for what happened in the club's first ever season. Um, is it still a day that means a lot to you? Um, massive, mate. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a huge day. Um, probably, obviously, the best in in my my playing career. Um, how I uh, how that day panned out. Um, it was a, a magical magical moment, and um, obviously, uh, to be honest, uh, one that that um, will live with me for the rest of my life. Obviously, we'll go through the day uh, in order, but in terms of that season, it was the club's first season as MK Dons. Uh, obviously, had been there as Wimbledon the year before, but um, it must have it must have meant a lot to be a part of of, of the beginning of a football club like that. And uh, obviously, there was a lot of attention on MK Dons that season, so you had to you had to deal with that. Um, what was that like? Um, obviously, I, I signed from I signed from Bradford um, to go to MK Dons, and um, it, I also remember sitting down with the chairman and uh, and having that first chat of what's the what's the plan and what's the what's the thoughts for MK Dons and obviously he's um he's a very good talker and he he, he um he sold that dream to me and me and my family and uh I was ex extremely excited as, as you said to go to a club that's just beginning um and obviously I know MK well, before I went to um MK they had some troubles with that administration and things like that um, and the, the, to be able to uh, be a part of the, the kind of the project that got sold um, to me was, was something that I, I was extremely excited about doing. And fortunately, I, it, it, it turned out, um, to be honest, uh, the best uh, four years of my life in terms of, uh, in terms of footballing terms. Uh, and obviously, um, you, mean, you look back at that team now and, you know some good players in the, in that in that first ever seed in the two thousand and four or five season. Is was it a little disappointing that we were where we were in the table um, going into that last game? Um, yeah, I mean, if you look at the squad, I think um, there were some quality players in there um, and ones that uh, a, a could have gone on to bigger and better things. And obviously, people like Louis are still playing for the club, which is which is amazing. So, uh, I think we had um, some really good players, but I think we were caught in a, a bit of the mindset. Um, kind of where where we were um, instead of uh, instead of looking probably looking at we, we're, we're more capable of achieving better things um, and we got caught in that little bit of a rut but towards the back end of the season uh, we managed to kind of pull things together and we went on a little bit of a run to get it, get ourselves in a in a decent position heading into the last game. They said it was a, there was a long unbeaten run wasn't there and. Um... You know, it wasn't you know everyone remembers that Tranmere game, but there was a lot of big wins up until then. And you know, I still remember a couple. Of, I think Oldham game at home where, where you got, again got a, a winning goal. It was so many games that 
in the build up that that, that kind of led to it and uh, it, it put us in that position to to survive because it was pretty it was pretty bleak at Christmas time. Yeah, it was bleak. Um, the one I the one I remember um, the most was the Bournemouth game. I'm um, going to Bournemouth. And uh, uh, we were obviously we we were in a bit of a run, but um, the difference was the um, the togetherness of the team. The team was in that last period. We kind of we, uh, we basically was it was like let's let's clear the decks and let's concentrate. We've got a chance, um, and only way we can get out of it is by working for each other. And and uh, we started putting some results together, which. In turn, um, but that Bournemouth one for me was uh, a really big win uh, for us, um, being especially away from home. Um, to to be able to to be able to uh, nick a nick a win there was was crucial. That was the Matt Baker penalty save, wasn't it? Was that that? Game? Yes, he saved. Yeah, he saved the penalty. Um, and I think I scored with the volley, oh, kind of a half volley again across the keeper. I think it was um as well but not just for those moments but we i think i don't think in that season we had a good run away from home um so to be able to um get a win um doing that was was a big thing and then it obviously all led to to the Tranmere game um had you been part of a final game of the season moment like that before was that kind of your first experience at um a winner takes all type of game um, no, it was, my, it was my my first experience of uh, of that, and uh, um, I, I remember uh, sitting in the changing room. Um, obviously, we were preparing for the game, and it was it was one of those. I usually do get a little bit nervous before games, but for this one, I didn't I didn't feel um, as nervous. And after the game, uh, Clive Platt, uh, who was to be honest, him coming in, um, he was a. Uh, that's kind of the point when our season turned, when Clive came in and uh, and gave us that focal point up front with Eisel. Um, but I remember him talking to me after the game and he said he had a feeling that something was going to happen and it was going to happen to me. Um, and uh, he didn't tell me before the game, um, but but um, I'm glad he had that feeling, that's for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And um well, hopefully his feeling was was the way we're going to describe it now. So obviously you 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 scored the first goal um, to put the, the team ahead, and I think you know, I worked out today. I think at that point um, it was six minutes in, so it was quite early, and um, Oldham had already gone ahead, and Oldham were the other team I think that were involved in the relegation scrap. So a lot going on, but it must have been important to get such a good start um, in that game. Yeah, um, obviously with with Platty with with Clive. Um, to be able to, you could make runs off him um, and know that he's going to win a lot of things in the air. So, a uh, lot of times I gambled, um, and fortunately for that day on that first one, um, gambled quite quickly. Got in, got away from, got away from the other midfield player, and managed to get into an area to, to, to have a, a an attempt and and um, luckily score. But um, yeah, it was a. I think I think that goal settled us down. I think we. I think if it went a little bit longer. Obviously, it went further through the through the half, and and then leading um, into half time, nerves probably would have got us a bit more. Um, but it kind of settled us down, um, and um, in that moment, so. definitely. And it's a bit different back then to what it is now in terms of you know people being on Twitter, and there's probably people on the bench nowadays that are, that are following updates on Twitter. It was a little bit different back then, and probably everyone was listening to the radio. How how in tune were you in terms of what was going on elsewhere that day? Um, it, if I, I think there was a, a bit from the bench. I think um, Danny Wilson, Danny, Danny Wilson was was terrific, but in terms of his support staff of giving us that um, little bit of information, but mainly it was the crowd um, hearing hearing what was um, little murmurs because you do you can hear, it, especially at the hockey stadium. Um, it was kind of one of those grounds where. Um, you could you could hear what people say, um, uh, positive and negative, but um, we could hear um, uh, noises of like what the results were and when the game finished and things like that. But um, I suppose a lot of it, um, obviously, when Tramir scored, um, it was really uh, we had to score. Um, so it was Erin got thrown out the window, and basically we had to go for it um, and try to do the best we could. I was going to say it was such an up and down day, and you know to be in the position we were for so long, that must have been such a blow when, when Tram had got that goal. Because you know, I suppose going into that game, you're only thinking, "Oh, we're going to win. We just need results to happen elsewhere." And then when suddenly you realise that you're not doing your own job, it must be tough. 
I think, yeah, I think if I look, look back through the game, well, we scored early and then I think uh, the, the thought process came in for us that we took, we kind of laxed off a little bit. Um, and then I, think I, I actually watched back that goal and um, that try and miss scored. It was very, we didn't get close to him. Um, it was like he just ran, ran to the edge of the box and finished. Um, so, yeah, and then maybe in other sense, it, it kind of woke us up a little bit as well. We, we've, got, we've got some work to do here um, and we've got to, we've got to uh, finish the job, hopefully. Now, I'm going to ask you to talk us through that goal um, in a minute. What I do have to ask, though, I mean, the most iconic thing about that goal was the announcement that you were the man of the match seconds before the ball fell to your feet. Um, did you hear that being announced or were you in the zone? I mean, I've, I've always wanted to know that. No, I didn't. I, um, To be honest, that um, period of me uh, when I think uh, Matt Baker, I think... Uh, long I uh, got flicked on and then I got flicked on again and then I obviously it came to myself I I, I literally uh, switched off it was like it was like I wasn't it, everything was just autopilot uh, I was I, I didn't think of anything I didn't think I'm going to run into that space and I'm going to do that or do that it just it just came and the ball to be honest looking back um, obviously I was I could use both sides fairly well, but um, to take the because obviously it was only a few minutes remaining to take the chance on my left side from 20, 20, 21 meters out. Um, I, it was, yeah, looking back, would I have done it again? Um, I'm not so sure, but um, yeah, it, the feeling was I didn't hear the, the commentary. Uh, I didn't hear that. Um, all I, um, but I have to be, I felt uh, going in, I felt, making the runs or in that period, I felt strong, if you know what I mean. I felt like I was, that something something was going to happen, but you obviously you didn't know it was going to be that. No, and you know, when it does hit the back of the net, I mean, can you even, can you remember the feeling or was it, again, was it all a bit of a blur just running off and celebrating? I mean, how uh, can you even put it into words how that must have felt? I, I, probably the best way to say is I wish I could get that feeling again um, because that that was a feeling that, um, yeah, it was amazing. So it's something that's obviously very, very emotional for me. Obviously, uh, my family was there as well. Um, and and uh, to be able to achieve uh, that, and I, th I think a lot of the terms in relegation coming, obviously I've had, I had the relegation, I had the promotion, um, a part of the promotion stuff, and the re relegation stuff actually means more um, in lots of ways of how you feel because you, you're digging deep. Um, to try to get yourself out of trouble to remain. And, uh, um, yeah, it was an amazing, amazing feeling. And after that, after the goal, I, I think I ran into about four or five players and then tried to break free to, to go and celebrate even further. Um, I, I had, I think I had about 20 minutes of celebration in me still um, that I could have gave. But, um, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. And obviously, you, you mentioned the importance of the relega about relegations. Um, I've had this conversation with, with Dean, uh, Dean Lewington, and he said it's so strange to, to feel so fondly about a relegation season because, you know, if you think back, it was a bad season. Um, you know, you, you lost more games than you won, and, you know, the club produced the DVD of it. And actually, when you watch that back, a lot of the games are, are defeats. Um, yeah. But it is, so, it is so special. And I think, like you said, I think it's partly because. And I think it probably plays into where the club was at at that point, where it was quite new, it was still finding its feet. A lot of the fans weren't MK Don's fans at that point. They were just people from Milton Keynes who wanted to watch football. And I think it was that whole digging deep for the final couple of months and all culminating the, the Champions game probably meant so much that that's why it's so fondly remembered. Yeah, I, I, I think um, it was a tough, tough season. At the beginning of the season and the middle of the season were very, very, very tough. And, and then for us to... Um, break that because it's very hard to get over that that routine of it and uh, i i agree i mean it's a it's, it's towards a relegation and you yeah it was it was it, that that emotion and i thought well if i don't mind louis reaction how what was louis thoughts when you spoke to him about it i mean again it's just it, it, so so good memories and you know kind of echoed what you said in terms of you know it, it meant a lot that you know the, the lads are kind of grouped together at, at that point and um, the run you put on and a uh, special day and day that, again, means so much to us. You know, he's had the highs of you know, three promotions with the club and yeah. Um, yeah. Man United. But, the, you know, that one's still up there for him um, in terms of, of a moment. And 
Um, you know, I think a lot of people who are there that day probably agree that, you know, it, it for some reason it's still up there with, you know, the May United game and, and the Yeovil game for the club because, it, it you know, at that, that time it just meant so much. Yeah, I, I think obviously being at the hockey stadium as well, um, that is very tight um, in terms of, of the crowd being quite, quite there and it was um it was uh, a, a terrific atmosphere what what got created um especially heading into the, heading the way that obviously i scored the the, the second goal um it it, it 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 felt like um we it was just everyone was a part of the same pulling in the same direction and uh there's not not many times you feel that um as a footballer at times especially when you play in the lower in the lower leagues as well yeah now, you know, obviously, moving on the following season, we we ended up did get you know ended up getting relegated, and um, obviously, but I think it was so crucial that in that first season we talked about it before. You know, from my experience anyway, as a young fan that was at the game watching it, um, I'd say that was the day that I knew I was an MK Dons fan. Now, if we'd have got relegated that day, would thousands of people still come back for the following season? I don't know, and I think actually a lot of people still stuck with the club even after the next relegation because of what happened in that in that first season yeah it's obviously um pleased to see that obviously that the growth has happened um for in terms of fans and keeping fans there um uh it's 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 amazing for um the club to have that that growth and i mean if where the club is now compared to what it was then is very 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 different um and obviously the success that it's had as well as i know it's had some um, relegations and stuff as well but it's, it's I'm so pleased to see what Pete because end of the day he um, when I first signed for the club I sat down with him and his thing was we want a new stadium we um, we want to do this we want to do that and uh, he, for a lot of that he's followed through with so which is terrific um, obviously you spent you spent I think you spent you said you spent four years with the club um, up until the end of the the promotion season um, some highs and lows, obviously, you know, some interesting stories I'd imagine from your time with Martin Allen. Um, uh, and then obviously moving into that promotion season, I know you probably didn't play as much as you want that season, but to still be a part of that run and, you know, you were involved on, in the squad for the game at Wembley. Um, you imagine you still have some good yeah. memories from that, from that time as well. I do. Yeah. Um, I, during that period, obviously I had, um, my, probably my only major, major injury, um, uh, for, uh, for my career, I was out for five months. But um, to be involved uh, in 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 the promotion and and obviously uh, to go to the Wembley uh, as well was uh, as a as a kid um, growing up um, that was my dream to 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 go to Wembley and to lift the trophy. So for to to be a part and be involved in that was um, an amazing feeling. Um, it was an incredible experience and a fantastic day as well. Obviously, you were with the Dons for over four years and I imagine you made some lifelong yeah. friends. Which, which players and staff do you still stay in touch with uh, today? Uh, so, obviously, Simon Crampton, um, obviously, is one. Obviously, Dean Lewington, uh, Clive Platt um, as well. Obviously, I came back uh, uh, last year. Eisel was still was working with the young players um, at the club and obviously, I'm speaking to Eisel as well. Um, um, so, uh, uh uh, Paul Mitchell as well, um, Nicky, Nicky Rizzo. Um, so obviously Nicky owns an academy down in Sydney and I actually go to his tournaments quite regularly. Um, so we play um, play games against each other with our kids. So yeah, it's uh, um, so there's a few of them um, that we still we still keep in touch um, and uh, and and I have fond memories of the day. I think um, earlier to earlier Clive Platt actually sent me a message and, and a link to. To, to the goal and stuff like that as well so which is which is which is nice you mentioned still speak to Dean um how mate I mean how amazing is it that he's still going strong um to this day and you know over 750 games league games for the club and um you know had one of his best seasons yet um for us I mean how, how impressive is he Oh, I, I, you could tell when we played with him when he was younger, his, his technique and his quality to, to be able to play for the length of time that he has and at the level that he has. Um, we always said, I, I always thought he, he could have gone a lot higher uh, in terms of his play as, as a player. Um, and I'm just so pleased to see him still still going around and still playing at the level that he, he is. Um, and he's a real credit um, to, to the football club and, and 
to be, to stick with the club and to be around it is 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 a, a real big thing. And uh, um, I hope he continues. Um, when I I saw him last year, in his his thought process was I I want to stay and play as long as I could. And and after I I said to him, do that because uh, you're a long you're a long time retired once uh, once it finishes. Good segue into the next question. Um, obviously, since you retired, you, you, you we touched on it at the top. You started a soccer school, um, which is obviously still running before before coronavirus, and hopefully you'll get back up and running at the end of the month. What what made you what made you go into that and uh, and start working with your, with young children? Uh, it's always, it was always been a dream of mine. Obviously, to head into coaching and head into working with young players. Um, and I obviously left England to uh, to come back and and play in Australia. Um, and uh, the club I was at um, went, went defunct, uh, which is just un, unheard of. It just it just disappeared. Um, uh, basically, I was there for nine months, and um, obviously I came from Tranmere um, to to uh, to North Queensland, and um, and then from that point I had offers to go to Asia and play, um, or to to go to another A League, a couple of other A League teams, and uh, it got to a point where um, uh, that kind of dream. That kind of part of my um, career, I went and I wanted to go down to another avenue. And, and coaching always, it was always something that I, I wanted to, to to work into. And I did my uh, UEFA B before I came out to Australia. Um, and obviously, I've um, got my my A license as well. And it's just something that um, really inspires me to w- work with those young players and help them to progress. Um, and, and I work with kids from from six, seven years of age all the way through to 18. And, um, and just to see uh, the talent that we have out here, um, but the lack of opportunity, especially up in, in these areas, is, is a big thing. So is, 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 you, is your aim to, to provide, you know, some professional clubs around there with some young players? Do you look to, you know, bring them over to England and, and play there? What's the kind of pathway for, for, the, for the young players in your academy? So um, obviously um, for the player, we've had a few UK tours that we've done, and we're actually meant to have one this September. But obviously with the virus, it's it's put that one on pause, which we're looking to do that in the um, e- uh, the following Easter. But um, yeah, we the, the objective is to make players better, help them improve, um, give them the quality of coaching to to make them better a people, but also as players, and and if give them some opportunities um, to to go on to the next level. I, um, we've sent, I sent uh, actually two over to, to England to actually MK Dons a few years ago uh, to give them some opportunity at, uh, in a professional footballing environment, uh, which Australia has uh, A-League clubs, but um, in terms of opportunities, because there's only 11 clubs, opportunity, there's not that many opportunities for young players. So um, obviously try to give them many, as much experience as possible of playing at higher levels to to basically hopefully they get some exposure but number one i mean i'm in an area that um only has three thousand kids playing the game um so it's it's not a big area i mean where i live in north queensland is a 17 17 hour drive from brisbane so it's a fair it's a fair fair way away so um and um we we have to try to everything's a flight down south or wherever it is so i'm um, trying to give these kids opportunities and give them chance to grow and 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 that's uh, when i finished playing um to to come to an area like i i did we didn't know much about um, north queensland I'm, I'm actually a sydney boy um so um originally and um to then uh come up to a place like townsville where we live and see that there's not really had been have been much youth development for, for young players. It's really something that I, that probably um, gave me that little bit of more. Of, I really want to be involved and really want to help. I think it's quite similar to, to where the clubs at. I mean, Milton Keynes um, was an area that wasn't really being utilised in terms of young players without a professional football club in before before the Dons arrived. And um, you know what Pete's been able to do by putting the club there is. Um, provide an opportunity for people in Milton Keynes to go on and develop. And, you know, Delhi's a, a perfect example of that, of a player that probably wouldn't have had the opportunity if it wasn't for an MK Dons. And, uh, you know, kind of similar to you, you know, using an area that hasn't really had that exposure and opportunity before. Must be quite proud to see that MK Dons is, is, is doing what they're doing in terms of bringing through players. Yeah, and obviously it's uh, some of the players like Delhi coming through the academy and 
um, Pete's, Pete's produced that. We talk about the first team, but what he's produced in those younger age groups and, and inspiring young Milton Keynes kids to, to see that you can have a, a, a potential career in a game and, and you can stay within your own city um, and, and still achieve um, having a career. That's, that's, that's a massive thing. Um, to have and uh, people like Delhi have got on to that that next level uh, which is great to see uh, we've talked about the Tranmere game but um, h- how do you reflect on it as a whole on your your MK Don's career um, with unbelievable um, memories of, of happy moments um, as you said there's a um, it was in mixed in a in a relegation um, obviously I had, we had a promotion and went to Wembley but um, just uh, what Touch me with Milton Keynes is the family feel. The fam that ha- what was created um, as a club, you felt like you were playing um, for for the people and for the for the city, and that 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 touched me because I think it gave you a purpose of when you're playing, of you're doing it for uh, the collective, and um, I I can't speak highly enough of of the people um, that the Milton Keynes fans the the, the people without the club, they they um, they've done fantastic to put the club where it is today, but also to give players like myself the opportunity to be a part and um, and to have that feeling of um, of of being loved and being a part of something was 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 something that I I, I still remember to this day and um, and uh, and still try to build uh, what I do now in my own setup as what the club gave me as in terms of that feeling. Um, so, yeah, it was a, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing club that um, I regard it as my club. Um, I'm a fan and, and will always be a fan uh, because of what, what the feelings I had.